Welcome back. It's been quite a while and I have made a presentation to share with you guys because I wanted to go through some reflections and some goals that I have for 2024. And so I'm hoping that by making this video, I'll just have it to look back on and I'll be able to see my thoughts and my process on you know why I want to do these things. And if you guys take any ideas from this video, super cool. If not, this is just my video diary. Starting with the first category, personal style, the first thing I want to do is thrift less. Now, this is a bit weird to be saying because obviously I love thrifting. It's kind of like my date that I have with myself. I just get lost looking at fabric. And so I collected a lot of things last year. I just need to calm down and really curate. In relation to thrifting less, I want to prioritize the fit of my clothes and the comfort. And this was something that I went through last year where I definitely was wearing a lot of comfortable outfits. I'm still on the hunt for certain kinds of things, trousers or just pants in general, and it's difficult for me. So that's why I need to thrift less because I need to maybe focus on finding a good pair of pants or trousers or find a brand that I like that I can go back to because right now I am really unfamiliar with stores that offer new clothes because I just got into the habit of thrifting. The third thing on my list is focusing on my color season and my kitty body type. If you don't know, last year I found my color season. I thought that I was a bright spring, but I think I'm a deep winter. This was a really big discovery because it opened up a ton of colors that I didn't think I would ever like. Like really bright purple and teal. I never wore teal, but now I just want teal things. Second is the kibby body type. If you don't know what that is, I'll just give you a brief little rundown. Essentially, the Kibbe system is a system that uses yin and yang, and it has to do with your bone structure and your flesh and the way clothes fall on your body. So there are style recommendations that David Kibbe gives depending on what type you have. The overall types are things like natural, dramatic, classic, gamine, and romantics. So for years, I thought that I was a soft gamine. Now I think I could be a theatrical romantic. And those two types have a lot of similarities, which is why I've been lost. And the only reason why I'm thinking that I'm a theatrical romantic is because my frame is small. It's really difficult for me to get clothes that actually go to my shoulder line. And also the fact that ornate things look good on me and like silky and plush things. I gravitate towards those things and I think it's because I know it, it fits. In relation to finding my body type and my color season, I ended up coming to my essence and the correct combo, I think that it is. I could be wrong, but this is just my hunch. I think that I'm a natural because things that look natural in essence do look good on me. Like, you know, curls are just wild. Now with ethereal essence, this is something that a lot of people want and it's tricky because it sounds amazing and magical, but thinking that I have ethereal essence helps me because I have an asymmetrical face. This on my face and this on my face look so different and I have a difficult time accepting this side of my face, even though it's normal to the rest of the world that see me. It's just when I present myself on camera, it's usually like this. So when it comes to ethereal, asymmetry is a characteristic. And so I think just knowing that it just is comforting to me, I'm actually embracing all of the things that I've been talking about right now with what I'm wearing. With the natural, my hair is out and fluffy and with my shirt it's cotton and it does have a texture to it so it's not a flat fabric there's kind of like lines you can see that's just the way the fabric is and the cinching at the wrist is a recommendation for theatrical romantics little pleats in the shirt it just looks like a little angel top also i thrifted this top for like two dollars last weekend and i was so excited because this leads me into the last point of my personal style goals 
which is finding basics that feel like me. And this is something that I have struggled with for years because last year I had a lot of fun with my style and that ended up with a lot of hours trying to figure out fun outfits because I wanted to branch out, I wanted to experiment. At the end of the day, I can still have fun, but I also want to find basics like this top that feel fun, like I'm not abandoning myself because this is a long sleeve shirt. It's not plain, it has these little details. And so I need to find these kinds of pieces. So when I need to get dressed quick and I'm not trying to do a whole outfit, I know I have, you know, key pieces. I just need to fill in some holes. Moving on to hobbies, first up is reading 10 physical books and 10 audiobooks. I wanted to just combine it into 20. Maybe I'll still do that because to be honest, I'm quite stressed about 10 physical books. I've been a book person, but it was strictly audiobook because a lot of my hobbies are like crafting and when I clean, I like to listen to something and I moved away from podcasts, that's the word. I'm reading three books right now, all at the same time. It's going pretty well. I'm actually working on speed reading and that's because what I do when I read is called a sub vocalization where I read like I'm reading out loud. So it's impossible to be fast. With learning to read fast, it's just a skill I want to practice. I'm really happy that I have this other way of relaxing. Right now I'm working on Manigold, which I'm almost done with. I'm 80% through, which is crazy. The other two are right here. I downloaded Manigold to my books app on my iPad. I read Akatar two years ago and loved it. I have the Assassin's Blade. I started with that one, so working on this and then from blood and ash i have the whole series i like being a book person now the next thing i want to work on is sewing with patterns which i've already started but i definitely still am intimidated by sewing with patterns i have printed out so many patterns and i don't think i have fully completed one thing except for the corset so by the end of the year i want to be comfortable with patterns i don't want to have anxiety over sewing with a pattern. I just want that confidence. And that also has to do with thrifting less because I want to stop thrifting things that I have to alter if I decide that I have something I want to make and then I go out and I get the fabric. Maybe I'll leave fabric from the thrift store, I don't know. But the point of getting the thing from the thrift store is to use the fabric, not to wear that item. That's the plan. I wrote down leather, which is something that I wanted to do for a while. I have leather needles. I have leather strips. I almost made a belt. Didn't really work out, but now I have tools. I also have saddle soap, which I'm going to use to clean some leather items. I've thrifted some things that I just want to, you know, make new again, new-ish. So when I got it, it just felt so cool. Like this is something that people have been doing, taking care of their leather which I've done in the past, but not to this extent. Like if I found something at the thrift store that was like old as another, like a bag, and I was able to restore it, oh my gosh, that would be a dream. Moving on, we have coloring, which is something that I've already done. My husband got me the Bob Ross coloring book. And so I just want that hobby to be not so intense. Like the goal isn't perfection because I have looked at coloring books and instantly I get a little bit stressed because I'm like, oh, it needs to be amazing by the end. And I don't want everything or every hobby that I do to have such an intense output or expectation, I should say. So I'm just trying to tie in little things like reading. The book has an ending. Someone wrote it, just like watching a show. Now we have photography and self-portraits, which is something that I did when I was doing YouTube a lot, but when you stop doing YouTube or social media, you end up with like no photos of yourself, unless you're just a person that goes out and does stuff all the time and takes a lot of pictures. But for me, I look back on the past couple of years and it's like, I don't have documentation. And it is a weird thing to think about. Like, it sounds a little vain. Like, I want all these pictures of myself, but there is something fun about like the idea that you have in your head of what the pictures, the portraits are supposed to look like. And then 
making it happen what kind of poses the lighting especially going outside i love taking photos outside do i have the confidence to go do it like in public yet i'm not really sure but we'll get there i also want this to be an activity i do with my husband because he loves photography so if i have a fun outfit or a costume i don't know a project that i finished and i want a photo shoot i could take that as an opportunity to be like honey let's go and do portraits in the park something like that i don't know and the last thing i want to do is obviously make more youtube videos now this is something that i think about all the time like it's ridiculous and i've definitely gotten into this mentality where YouTube videos have to be complicated. I want to take this year to go back to the basics, just use my voice and talk about things that I like, um, things that I'm enjoying, reviewing things. This has just been my thing and I shouldn't let the idea of making a perfect video stop me from making content. Now we have movement. So the first thing is dance classes, which I started in December. I haven't been back. No, no, I started in November. But yeah, I haven't been back in a bit because I was thrown to the front of the class and I got a little stressed, but it's fun. It's choreographed. You kind of learn the dance and just being around people that are all just into dancing is really fun because I love to dance. I grew up dancing. And the reason why this is important is because with my healing journey with certain trauma, viewing my body is very intense, like from myself. And so I have just been working on being a person that can be free and move their body and dance in front of other people and it's fine. I just want to like remember myself as a kid because I danced a lot as a kid. Just nurture that part of me that loves movement. Of course we have the basic stretching, yoga, Pilates, blah, blah, blah. Just variety. I do more of that in the summer, like I go outside on the porch, so. Looking forward to that. And then we have Frisbee golf, which I already do. If you did not know, I do that with my family slash friends and husband. We go to parks and we throw our Frisbees. I started this maybe three years ago. Did I ever think that I would be throwing Frisbees for fun? No, 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 no. I was afraid to throw Frisbees, but that was at people. Now I throw them at baskets, which is great because I'm only competing with myself. And that's the joy of the sport. You're just trying to improve your skills and get to be outside. It's kind of like hiking, but not. And it's always safe usually, like you're not going into the woods with bears because I kind of stopped hiking because of the bears and I don't want to talk about it, it's fine. And last we have weight training, which as you know, if you've been here, I do enjoy, but it's more about being in front of the people, specifically men, and just doing my thing comfortably. It's, it's difficult, it's an ongoing process, guys. And when it comes to weight training, I need to be gentle now. I cannot go too hard. There's no more lifting super heavy weights with my hands. Even with Pilates and yoga. Planks, I have to be careful. Anything that requires me to be on my wrist, I have to be careful. And my knees. So there are just a lot of movements that I stay away from unless I can strengthen my knees, my quads. Maybe I'll get back into some things, but yeah, I'm very picky with the movements I do because I don't wanna hurt myself. That is not the goal. Moving on to self-improvement. We have travel to uncomfortable places, which I will be doing because my cousin's getting married in Italy at the end of the year, and that will be interesting. I've never been to Europe. I have to plan where we're gonna go. We're flying into Milan. I'm not sure where else I'll be going. I've just been out of the international travel loop for a few years, so I'm just like a little, a little rusty, but it'll be fine. Second on this list is learn a new skill. Now, this is something that I've done before, and this came up last year. It was not early in my life, but I met someone, and they had a certain hobby, and the conversation around it is that I am scared of this thing, and that is riding horses. So, <laughs> I want to take horseback riding lessons, and I've been on horse a few times. I did Girl Scouts when I was in the Philippines. They took us to a zoo, and there was like a horseback little circle that you would go on and i was 15 the last time i did that and i still remember like it was yesterday meeting that person last year and that was their hobby i just was like i'm afraid of riding horses and i hadn't talked about it in so long that now i'm just like hmm i don't want to be afraid of riding horses i never actually learned 
how to be on a horse as an adult. So I'm less scared about it because I feel like I have more control over my body and I'm surrounded by horses, horse places. So it's not going to be difficult. It's just going to cost money, obviously, to invest in this skill. And I think it's important to invest in yourself in some way. I thought about it in this way. There are parents that have kids and they invest in them to do lessons, dance classes, gymnastics, taekwondo, all kinds of stuff like that. I don't have kids. So at this point, maybe I should just treat myself like the kid. And when it comes to horses, I like them now. Like they're just majestic. I just think this like huge muscular animal is like so powerful and humans have relied on horses for so long and they're obviously in all the period drama shows. The Lord of the Rings, like every single, almost every single thing that I watch and love has horseback riding. I just want to be able to know how to ride a horse comfortably because God forbid I have to escape on one, I will know. Taking a step back from the focus on myself, I want to go more day nights. Now, this is something that obviously every relationship should have, but we suck at going on date nights. I have a hard time spending money on food, food out. I need to see it as a different way, as a way to connect with my husband, go see somewhere new, maybe go a little bit further, not like in our vicinity of living, just use that as a way to make memories. There should be something about it that makes it a bit special. The last thing on my list is a bit funny just to see on this page and it is friendship and what I mean by friendship. So I want to see if I can make a new friend. I don't have many friends and I have difficulty making friends because I just don't know how it's done. I've watched so many videos on how to make friends. We'll see what happens. Let's see if I can maybe make a new friend this year um, that I have something in common with. I don't really, I don't know. This is a weird goal. I feel weird saying it out loud. So I'm just gonna roll with it, make a new friend. So that's it for my goals. <laughs> that was a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stuck around to the end, please leave me a big star in the comments because you are a star. We're all stars and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.